Hello, hello. A very good evening to you. I hope you're all doing very well. A warm welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Simpilot. Today we're taking the Aerosoft Twin Otter for its preview stream. First time we streamed it on the channel. There is a video up already, but uh, it's it's very exciting. This is obviously the, the latest big release from Microsoft Flight Simulator coming on the 19th. So we're just two days away from its launch now. And today we've got a preview build. It's a beta build. So there, there are still, this has not changed since my video. So there are still things missing or the same as that. Uh, but they are working hard, I'm sure, getting it ready for release. So today we're going to take it for a hop around the uh, around the Solomon Islands, which is something we've ne not done before on the channel, not a part of the world we've been to. Seemed like a good excuse, especially as they provided this livery in the uh, in the pack that I, uh, I've been using. Let me know how the audio is, everybody, because I've experimented quite a bit with my setup for this stream. So uh, I'll be curious to know if there's any changes. I hope you can hear the uh, desktop audio, as it were, which would be the, the simulator. So you let me know how the sim sounds are, and we'll see how it goes. Great. So jumping into the chats over on YouTube. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We've got uh, Rich V. Thanks for coming along to moderate and look after us. John Callum and Alitas Maggie. I hope you're all doing very well. Lauren V. 200 and uh, Victor Tango as well. Thanks for coming along to moderate. Etoslam, good to see you. <laughs> Ed's excited to see the the, uh, the Twin Otter. Ed's been very excited about it <laughs> for a while now. Uh, Road to Fib, Andre, Ebos, good to see you all. Sagosh, good to see you again as well. Uh, Sagosh says, why is this plane such a big deal to so many people out of curiosity? I think it's it's been a part of the flight simulator landscape for a long time. And it's, you know, it's something that was going to have to come to this simulator. And here it is. And I think that's that's just what people have been waiting for to get the chance to, to see it and uh, it's a good airplane for exploring the scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator no doubt nice and slow and it's, it's just it's just a, quite a unique airplane and everybody knows it there's not many of them out there they're surprisingly rare but they are they're very well loved where they are used anyway um, so that's probably why but yeah you have to ask uh, see what other people think uh, Hanna good to see you as well uh, the speed is very slow it approaches at around 80 knots can cruise over 120 140 160 you know it does go a bit quicker it is a turboprop but it's not we can not be going very fast in it no uh, Lufthansa 6758 uh, Ebos good to see you all I hope you're doing very well Joe Vaughan Tom Corwine good to see you Mr. Espresso I hope you're doing very well good to have you back and uh, Pilot Visk Chris Patton is in Texas. Excellent. I hope it's going well. Probably a bit warmer there than it is here. The Greatest Donut. Greetings to you, John. And there's loads of names. Swiss Pilot, Anders. <laughs> I do apologize. Audio sounds good, says everybody. Excellent. We'll see how it goes uh, with the um, yeah with the simulator sounds. There are a lot of sounds missing from this this beta build, so there it won't be it won't be as good as uh, as a release product. I can tell you that um, for the the audio. Uh, Matthew, it's good to see you. Matthew is the uh, obviously the Aerosoft. I've, I've forgotten uh, the exact title. I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, let me just uh, see. <laughs> um, but Matisse obviously uh, is running, if not very high up in the uh, Aerosoft uh, add-on department. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Matthew says, FYI, the checklist in that file set is not the right one, so don't use it. Okay, okay. Oh, dear. That was... Uh, <laughs> I've got that all queued up here. So that's... Um, that's uh, slightly concerning. There are a few things in the checklist that I've noticed that didn't quite line up. Um, so I, uh, yeah, we, we had to. Uh, I have ignored those before, but we'll we'll do our best. That leads me to wonder if I can find another checklist in time. Um, I will do my best. But there we go. But uh, thanks for joining us, Matthews. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see this one released. As I'm sure everyone in the in the chat is. Checkpoint, good to have you here as well. Uh, and. Uh, window seat as well. Window seat, our resident Airbus engineer. It's been a while, window seat. Hope you're doing very well. Thanks for joining us today. So, uh, good news as well. If you want to fly along, we're going to be in Microsoft Flight Simulator's North Europe server. Just select all players, join the North Europe server, and we're starting from Alpha Golf Golf Hotel. That's the, the starting point for this stream. Uh, I realize now, as ever, that I've forgotten to start the overlay sort of extra information. So, you'll hear a few dings as I uh, get that up and running. We're also on Twitch, of course, so thank you for joining us on Twitch. Dougal McTavish, thanks for coming to moderate there. And uh, Booth Minstrel says, what a great aircraft. So, yeah, it is good fun. Uh, Mr. Banana, good to see you as well. And Richard Darsley, Richard Darsley says, can this one fly a hold? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I will have a go. We're going to use the, the GPS in it. Uh, EU, good to see you as well. I see Lauren V moderating over there. Thanks very much for doing both. 
Uh, and uh, Paddy F as well. Good to see you. Paddy says, Sky Vikings are the scariest by far. There you go. Uh, <laughs> MSJN says, checklist item one. Ignore checklist. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's how it's going to be today. Um, we're going to do some hops. So I don't know what a realistic route network is for Solomon. They only have two aircraft, believe it or not. They have one Twin Otter and one uh, A320. So it seems like a suitable airline to choose. We're going to start off by flying from Honiara International, which is where we're starting, over to Alpha Golf Golf Yankee. And we're going to be the Sol. Three, uh, let me get this right, 301. There we go. Um, so that is uh, Yan Yandina Airport. So these are very small airports for this route. We're lucky if we have a GPS approach in it. Um, but uh, yeah, that is the, the plan for today. Sun's just rising. I've actually accelerated time slightly in this one, which is unusual. Um, normally we're running in the past, so uh, yeah, it's nice to have that. It is a different fleet, Mr. Manali. It's, uh, it's an interesting one, but it's uh, it makes sense. It seems to suit them. But yeah, very, very small airline. Started in the 60s as a charter airline, and then uh, it grew slightly <laughs> into, uh, into what it is today. But yeah, it should be good fun. Right, let me just, sorry, I'm just trying to get this up and running. There we go. Right, hopefully that will bring you all the overlay. And I'm going to join the multi-stream chat here so I can see you all. Right, uh, Louis Ricardo, good evening to you as well. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, Richard Darsley prefers the island there. Well, we'll see. We'll see how we feel after this. So you might have seen my video on this uh, aircraft. I did a video in the Maldives on the float version. This is the DHC-300, DHC-6. 300 so it's the the latest version there is a 400 now so it's not quite the latest but that's not included in the package this is the the newest version in the package it's got that sort of longer nose um, and it can seat up to 20 passengers with uprated pt6 engines the pt6 engine we've seen on this channel many many times it's, it's used in so many aircraft of this sort of size and smaller and bigger it's incredibly versatile twin otter doesn't seem to suffer for power at all it's it's uh yeah it's, it's a well well powered aircraft and we all know it's designed for short takeoffs landings, rugged terrain. It's got nice big wheels. Included in the package, if you watch my video, you'll see there's lots of different versions, including Tundra wheels and so on. This is just the normal passenger wheels. Uh, oh, look at that detailing. That's good. This uh, this little mark here, I don't know how many of you know, this is so that you can see if the tire is slipping against the hub. So you've got paint on the tire, and then they, they paint onto the, um, onto the, the rim as well. So you can see, and that should be in line, obviously. Uh, I haven't ever seen it out of line. But I have seen bulges on tires things like that which are obviously not great it does always surprise me as well airplanes we you know land on um some flooded runways doing hundreds of miles an hour and we get we get the most basic level of tread <laughs> but i assume there's a reason probably it would overheat or not be very useful if it was anything else but there we go matthew says here is a checklist that will work excellent thank you very much let me see if i can uh see how i can Make sure I get to that. And of course, thank you to, to Matthew for uh, sending over the, the Twin Otter in advance so we get to preview it. Uh, window seat says, that's impressive, the red line modelled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, it's great. And then as we go around the visual model, you'll see the, the different uh, texturing and detailing. It's, again, preview build, things to be changed, but it's all here. This looks like the ice shield to me which you'll be familiar with from the Q400 uh, videos where we did that. So yeah, that uh, doesn't really do much. And I always I always laugh at eye shields because just like on the dash, there's a cutout around the, the window here. So <laughs> you, you sort of think you're sitting there and the ice comes flying off. It's got extra protection for the airframe, but the window doesn't need it. And I wouldn't be surprised. The windows are incredibly strong, passenger windows, of course. Uh, hey, Jay Robbins, good to see you. I hope you're doing very well. Thanks for coming along. Could you fly to Barry at some point in this? Barra. Oh, yeah, we could. Of course, Barra would be a great place to take it. Um, we did indeed do that with the, uh, I think, RW designed one in X-Plane 11. So that's where, what we originally did with the um, with the first one after we flew on the on the channel. Dougal McTavish says, I've jumped from a couple of these. Excellent. So we've got a couple of experienced people with this. This, this is what I mean. This is why this aircraft is light. Lots of people have, have been involved with them. I think Ed uh, has worked on them. Ed uh, Dougal's jumped from them, which is pretty pretty impressive as well. But uh, there we go. Got the icing boots along the leading edge. I like the texturing on those. I have to try and inflate them. I'm not sure if they inflate. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that yet. I don't think we're too concerned about uh, ice in today's conditions. It's a rather lovely day. There's four prawns <laughs> flying over there. You also get these uh, sort of, 
don't know what they're called. They're called like strakes on the the Airbus. These help prevent separating uh, airflow at high angles of attack usually. But there you go. You'll notice as well, compared to the um, float version, we don't have the sort of strakes on the tail. They helped increase the sort of lateral stability, but here, uh, here we are. They're missing. Still got that oil, dirty oil coming from the back of the engines because, of course, the exhaust goes right over the elevator. Incredibly sensitive on pitch as a result, and that's sort of what you'd expect because, of course, the prop wash blasts over that elevator and provides a, a really sensitive sort of pitch rate. So for today's video, I'm also, or stream I should say, I'm also going to be flying using the uh, Yoke, the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight, which I haven't used for a little while, so we're going to use that. As it seemed very appropriate to have a proper Yoke for flying this airplane, can't fly with the joystick, surely not, surely not, as we have one available. Uh, Ed says, I like how the elevators are modeled, there you go, yeah. So sitting here with the control locks on, got a little tailwheel skid here as well, pretty cool. I don't know if you have to get the airplane inspected after touching that or not. But uh, most any bigger aircraft, you certainly would. So they're not sort of they don't save you that much. But uh, <laughs> they don't save the paperwork. But they might save the airplane from some extra inspection work. What else have we got around the nose? Is where a lot of the detailing usually is. Yeah, there you go. Static ports with little veins in front of them as well. Unusual. There we are sitting in there. Front door. Lots and lots of extra paneling lines it's, uh, yeah it's great how many versions you get in this package as well that's what really really impressed me so it's uh, yeah it's, it's really um, really nice to have all the all the variety right at some point I'm gonna have to, to get in and uh, <laughs> see if I can uh, see if I can work it out so God says oh no I only own a joystick <laughs> well you see I have the uh, oh there you go veins are to avoid icing so they'll help the statics from icing up look at this so Aerosoft provide a manual and the, I, th I mentioned it in my preview video. The manual is is uh, it's excellent. It's so so comprehensive, and it's full of stories from from real pilots who've flown the, the Twin Otter in different situations. So it's very good, and you can tell that Aerosoft have a bit of a history with this airplane in flight simulator because it's just full of full of details and anecdotes. And I am um, um, I've only scratched the surface, so I'm going to embarrass myself for sure today uh, flying this. By the way, these cutting emergency sort of cut up panels you get this on uh, most aircraft. Airbuses as well. It's so that you can the fire brigade could cut into the airplane if they needed to without sort of severing a fuel line or something really embarrassing. And of course, we did talk about the fact that this airplane unusually has fuel tanks under the fuselage and not in the wings. Utterly bizarre. I, I haven't worked out what the advantage of that is, but the downside, of course, is that it um, it means that the fuel can't be gravity fed. The fuel has to be pumped up to the engines. It has to go uphill to get to them. Hence, there's normal pumps, standby pumps, emergency pumps. <laughs> the one thing you cannot do is run out of pumps because they really need it for getting uh, getting the fuel up there. Hayden says, are there any parachutes? The hold is a bit crowded. Yeah, how, how crowded? Yeah, two, <laughs> the hold will be a bit crowded today, I'm afraid. Uh, but some of you can take your own airplanes if, uh, if that is an issue for you. Oh, just punch the microphone, as is traditional. Right, let us... Um, it's going to be really. This going to be really interesting because <laughs> using a yoke is is not what I'm used to. So I usually have my desk with pen and paper on it um, and my notes and so on. This time I've got just the yoke in front of me, so I might might struggle a little bit with the camera. We'll see how it goes. Mr. Banana says fuel tanks in the bottom have the advantage of having a lower CG. Might be nicer floats. There you go. Yeah, it could be a handling thing. Interesting. Yeah, make it more stable on the water because of course if it was floating, they float planes very high up, especially the Twin Otter. If you had all the fuel up here, it would make it really unstable. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I wonder. JB wants to know how many cold beers can you carry in it? Probably quite a few. Probably quite a few. We're going to have a zero fuel weight of around about uh, 500 kilos, just under 500 kilos for today's flights. Right, let's jump in. Let's see if I can press the right button. There we go. And this is the cold and dark sort of setup. We've got the control lock on and... Oh, nice seats. These are different seats, I think. These look different to the ones I saw in the other variants. Yeah. And we can sort of wander around, obviously, into the cabin. Let's open up the stairs that the passenger's on. Short flights today, so it's not going to take us too long to uh, do that. Microsoft Flight Simulator still has some, some quirks to its uh, cameras. Now, how do I open this? I have managed this in the parachute version. There it is. So we can board at the back. I've been a little concerned about tail tipping. That might be more why there's that... Uh, that skid on the back might not actually be for, for um. Oh, wrong button. I knew I was going to do that. That skid on the back might be more for uh, boarding times. 
Uh, right. Matthew says, install it is via the Aerosoft One. Three clicks, no entry of serials. Yep. So um, I, I use Aerosoft One to just get the uh, well when the preview was was given over. But yeah, it's it's a, a very very neat system. It's nice. It's 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 going to be the future having these sort of installers so that you can keep things up to date because it's very hard trying to find all the different files from Microsoft Flight Simulator because of course it hides. You got you've got work packages and different packages all around. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty good to have it like that, definitely. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, it is time then that we jump into. So, uh, so Matthew, this checklist, which checklist? Are we have we decided we're okay to use a checklist in the simulator, or um, are we not? I haven't found access to another one in time, so I'm tempted to use this one if i can apologize in advance <laughs> but it might be a bit out of date so uh, if you see something you don't like um it's uh yeah there, there are things in here that uh, i think possibly need updating oh don't do that uh, everything works i haven't found a switch that doesn't work and i think if you've seen my preview video even if you have the parachute version that the little traffic light system works as well which is great so anyway let's go before start engines control locks checked release so that's easy enough click down there Tick. Uh, parking brake is set. That's this one. So pulled out. Set. Tick. Power lever check idle. So I've got these assigned. Um, I haven't bothered with reverse for this one. Uh, oh, so this is for the PC6. I see. So this is I, <laughs> that would explain a lot because there were some things in the checklist I uh, yeah I couldn't find. So that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> so where is the where is the new one? Sorry, everybody. I do apologize. And if you're trying to join us uh, and you can't see us on multiplayer, then make sure you've got all players selected on. All players selected on. Okay, so uh, power levers check idle work. So this is these are called throttles. Hence, I suppose that would make sense. Power levers they're called power levers on the dash eight. So that that's starting to make sense <laughs> as to uh, to how it is. Um, oh, how, what what the the difference is certainly. Let me just. Uh, right, okay, so power levers check idle, they are, and the idle control lever cut off. So this is something we'll recognize from the PC6 as opposed to being in the, the, the twin R. So that's what I couldn't find. Um, and we're going to leave the props in, I think it loads them up in fine. Yeah, so they're in fine, not feather. Now, someone commented saying that um, they wanted it, they reckoned it should be loaded up cold and dark with these props into feather. So you can see they're fine where they're effectively pointed into the wind. Um, Sorry, uh, where they're pointed like a windmill. So this is an unfeathered engine. A lot of turboprops will start like this because it's easier to spin them around, obviously, for the startup sequence. But somebody in the comments reckoned these should be in the feather position at cold and dark. I don't know which is correct. I've not found a twin otter. I've not seen one for a while. So that's just something interesting. But anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to tick. Uh, prop RPM full forwards. So that's where they are. Um, and I've got those assigned to an axis, so I'm going to leave them in full forward for now, unless they would start back in the feather position. It's interesting. Dash 8, of course, starts in feather and then moves forward. So we'll go full forward. Starter switch is off. That's up here. Ignition off. Generator off. Aux fuel pump off. So this is just making sure all the systems we've got are off. Uh, landing lights, which are up here, captain only, <laughs> are uh, off. Enunciators, uh, battery master switch is coming on. So... Um, Battery master switch up here. So you've got two two different options here. Um, I'm of interest. I'm just going to see. I do have a checklist for the Twin Otter. Maybe we can use that. I'm just wondering if it's built into x 11 or whether it was external.
do apologize everyone we will get going and this is gonna be much slicker when we get underway because <laughs> uh, what we'll do is we're gonna fly several um several different uh several different sectors But this would uh, this makes so much sense because I made my my first video and I was getting confused trying to find things I, and I, I remember trying to find things before when I first flew this <laughs> this aircraft and having uh, such such a struggle with it. Um, but let me just see, do we have it? Documentation, flight tutorial. doesn't include a checklist I promise I will stop doing this shortly <laughs> we've got an operating manual checklist 24 uh, no no that's only built in all right forget it we'll uh, we'll go without um, Right, Matthew says, bat, mass, uh, bat first, master second. So there you go. So uh, this is the ignition set to normal. We've got DC master, and then we have this external power. We're not going to use external power today, so we're going to put this to battery. Uh, and that should, I think this will, we can see our voltage on here, as you can see. So the generators are providing zero, but the battery is sitting at, what's that, 25 volts. So that's good, uh, with a bit of a load on, as you'd expect. And then we can put on the DC master. Lights come to life, it also turns on all the avionics uh, and so on. I'd imagine you might in real life find yourself having to switch all of these. Let's put the transponder to standby. Um, and then you'd want to start the engines pretty quickly after doing this. I suppose we could call for ground power, but um, let me get rid of the weather tab. Uh, yep, yeah, so anyway, there we go. Battery master switch, uh, radios, avionics, fuel valve, uh, engine and oil temperature check. Next is going to be starting engine, which will be pretty straightforward. So... What we're going to do is check that this is all in the right place. So we're going to load up the fuel first. We need for this first leg a ridiculously small amount of fuel, 500 kilograms, because the alternate is just turning back on ourselves. So fuel, let's load up. Uh, it's done in gallons. Of course it is. Let's go to pounds. 2.2 <laughs> pounds. So we need about uh, 1,200 pounds of fuel. We've got... In the two cents tanks, as you can see, uh, we've got about 1,400. So we have enough fuel. That's good. Uh, we've got quite a lot of payload. So we've got plenty of passengers. Uh, I'm assuming that's one in each row. Maybe we'll upload, uplift a bit more. plan was to have a zero fuel of around about uh, 4.9 tons. So that'll be... Oh, dear. This is... Uh, yeah, lots of converting to do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, about 10.8. So somewhere close to here. Okay, good. Right, so pretty heavy. This is obviously the hub. This is the hub for Solomon Airlines. So there we go, loaded with passengers and fuel. Get rid of that. And then we've got the fuel gauges are down here. So 800 pounds in each side, 600 pounds total. So that's more than enough for what we're doing. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, temperature. So it's pretty mild outside, it seems. Although I imagine it's all in Fahrenheit. <laughs> the fuel flow rate. Uh, we can test the fire systems. So there you go. They light up. Oh, I like that. That's a nice, nice effect as well. Uh, and we've got... What else have we got? Endless systems. There are a few down here. So you can mute auto for the test. So I can actually get the camera down there. There you go. And then it seals shut. I like that. That's nice. Prop governor test and beta range test. Yeah, all very propeller related things. The nuisance of having propellers always much more complicated than uh, than jets. Oh, wrong button again. There we go. Right. Uh, you can see here we've got the fuel cutoffs set to normal at the moment. Sure that's working. Yep. Uh, and we've got the handles, which are what are the handles for? Fire pull, handle pull. Maybe that's for launching the actual extinguisher. Yeah, I think that's what they do. Um, so yeah, not the not the slickest system, but there you go. Ram air, open, close, vent fan. 
Oh, we've got sound for that. So can you guys hear the sounds? They are working then. That's good news. Um, so that is what I was hoping. Let me just check in the right part of the chat. Uh, Richard Dasley says, so far in Europe, I've had ATC uh, drop out of two walls and temperature change. Okay, so we're having a bit of trouble with the, uh, <laughs> the live weather still, perhaps. Um, there you go. Uh, KT, good to see you. KT says, I worked on the Twin Otter when I was in the Army many years ago. Excellent. Right, so that's done and we have the alternate static needs to be in norm oh what's down here battery temperature getting too hot so we need to start the engines really because we are just draining the battery the volts are still good but it's uh it is overheating so we've got the fuel we've got the load let's go and close up that rear door get ourselves underway i'm going to start up the engines then do the route because i'm going to take me ages to figure out how to do a gps now where is the click spot for the door Never click on something without remembering. I'm sure it's somewhere here. Maybe we need to click on the actual door. There it is. That's the handle. Excellent. Right. <laughs> Back in our seat. Let's get the engine up and running. So, this I do remember. We need the fuel. Should be at cutoff. There we go. Uh, and what we're going to do is start up engine number two. Check it's all clear around, which it is. Start number two. So, right engine. It's going to spin around. It's just electrical starting. Got a lot of pressure. No light up yet, of course. RPM slowly increasing. And then the NG RPM. Just going to let it all accelerate. Sounds good. Excellent. There we go. And we're going to introduce fuel. If I can click the right one. There it goes. Now we're looking for a light up. So Diego T5, temperature lights up. to life. Okay, so we got oil temperature, oil pressure's finally reaching the green. Uh, we've got the RPM spooling up and if we look up here, we should see, yep, there we go, we've got voltage and load on the generator. I see, if I set it to the middle, we see the, uh, the battery draining slightly. That's good detailing. Good. Right. Next, we're going to start up, of course, engine number one. So let's do that. Around it goes. The grinding noise is the vent fan. <laughs> so we can turn that off if that's too loud or irritating to people. There we go. RPM goods. Introduce fuel, boom. Light up, fuel flow. Check that pressure increases. 19th of January release, exactly. Canadian uh, moustache, good to see you. Uh, I have never flown this Winotter in real life, but I have been a passenger on one. It was very noisy. It was very noisy. There we go, right, temp just stabilised. It's all coming together. Good. So here you go, we've got stars, boost pumps and emergency. Then we've got the normal fuel uh, and we can choose which tank we're using and then we've got the normal boost pumps there. So that's test. Let me turn it on and off. So I imagine they go on for uh, on the takeoff. That's going to be my guess <laughs> as to those. Listen to Jake, he's a pro. There we go. Jake says, turn boot pumps on before you start. Right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling these need to be on. So these are the, the boost pumps, and then we've got this emergency boost pumps. Um, and that's good. Thanks for all the follows and subscriptions. I hope you're all doing very well, and I do apologize for my uh, <laughs> slightly lackluster uh, beginning. But we are getting there, we are getting there. Good. Right, engine's up and running. There's everybody <laughs> ready to fly along. So what I'm going to do now is check we've got everything set. So the props are fully forward. We've got the fuel on and landing lights are off. We've got the ignition system to start off over here. Different lights and windshield wipers. That's fine. Up on the overhead panel. Now this is the hardest overhead panel I've ever seen. It's quite... Uh, 
yeah, quite interesting. But we're going to have, should have had the anti collision on, of course. No seatbelts fast and seatbelts are on. Position lights will be the nav lights. That's good. And there's loads of checks we should have done. Absolutely loads. Bleed air. Well, we're not going to pressurize today. So that's a curiosity of mine. Do people in the Twin Otter use the bleed air system? Bleed air obviously takes quite a bit of power out of the engine. So I'm guessing not unless you're planning on pressurizing. But that is a complete guess. Uh, and as you can see, every, every button presses. There's absolutely no trouble with any of that. We're not going to use any of the de-icing stuff today. Uh, and the boots are going to stay off for now. But we might try them out later on once we got going. Okay, it's got the lights on. I think we're in a good place. You can hear that the engines have cut out. That's... Oh, that's my fault then. What have I done wrong? They've actually turned off. So why did that happen? That's interesting. It's for, just for the de-icing boots. Right. Right. Excellent. So what have I done? we got fuel quantity. That's in norm. Didn't press any of those. The levers are all forwards. So I'm a little surprised. Yeah. Hmm. Strange. I haven't had that trouble before. Evening, Michael John. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, let's start those stages up again. So we go right. Move the condition levers. Right, okay. I'm going to put those up there. There's a fuel flow straight away. So the problem I've got is <laughs> uh, what's happened is I've assigned these to one axis and clearly that's not good enough because for the startup sequence you need two so what I did was I started them up by clicking on them and then I just moved the axes hoping it wouldn't notice and it obviously did <laughs> so that is my fault yeah I was wondering why I got so quiet JV I was exactly the same right that's stabilizing let's go for number one I call it one they call it left and right unusual to see left and right naming yeah, those are in the on position, aren't they? They should be there. Anyway, ignore the fact that the other one's on. That's my fault. We've got a fuel flow. It's lighting up, most importantly, as long as it lights up. <laughs> you know, Michael John. Hope you're doing well. Google can hear us a bit far out there. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of us. Right, I'm not going to touch those uh, again. Good, that's up and running. Got the boost pumps on. So that's why I was wondering then. So the engine started with the boost pumps already on. Uh, sorry, when I had them off. Is that realistic? Should they start with the boost pumps off? Or would it, would it not even start, seeing as it's not gravity fed? Just a curiosity. This first sector, we're only going to go up to 6,000 feet. So I'm just going to set that in the window for now while I'm here. This is, I, I have absolutely no procedures to follow here. I am, uh, <laughs> there, there is an excellent manual and I, I have not had the chance I'd hoped to, uh, to read through it. So this is very much me making it up as we go. So I do apologize. Uh, Rishab says, hello, it's been a long time since I joined the live stream. I've been watching the recording, so nothing beats watching it live. Thanks for joining us, Rishab. Yeah, of course, the recording is up. So thanks for watching those. Jake says, after start, don't forget to turn your gens one or two from off to reset uh, and then leave them on. Thanks very much, Jake. So. Oh, not that one. What do we have? What pre assigned views do we have? Yeah, there we go. Right. Gen 1 and 2. Oh, excuse me. So this is an electrical panel, but that's not got it on there. Where's the Gen 1 and 2 gone? Lighting, boots, the icing boots. Bust tie, here we go. So they are in off, so they go reset and on. Reset and on. Ah, and that would explain why we didn't have any electrical load on them earlier. So now if we go to generator left. That's got a slight negative load and high voltage. So that seems correct. Battery is charging, heavily charging. Okay, good, good. That would make sense because we would expect a negative load on the gens. Great. Okay, thanks very much, Jake. <laughs> Pneumatic low pressure, well, we don't have the bleed air. Do we need to do anything about that? Dougal says, this is called winging it. Yeah, it is indeed. We are uh, doing, <laughs> doing our best. So thanks, thank we've got Jake here to help us out. Uh, Captain Massage says, very likely has engine-driven low pressure pumps, so the boost pumps are safety. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we've got the NDA, um, NDB or IDF down here. Uh, this is like brake pressure. We've got the normal static. We've done that. Battery hopefully will cool down because it was a bit alarmed. We can test that. <laughs> and it disappears off the top. 
Okay, let us see what we can do next. So, just make sure we have the right Q&H set. There we go, 2968. We're pretty much down at sea level. First route, uh, let's load it up into the GPS. Right, flight plan. We're going from Alpha Golf Golf Hotel. All the way around. I had to start with Alpha, didn't it? Can't imagine my airline's very happy with me now. The amount of fuel we're going to spend <laughs> sitting here. But this will get quicker. We'll be all over it for the next one. There we go. On the Ara. Accept. And there's no airway or anything like that for this route. We're going literally straight to the next one, which is going to be Alpha. Oh, excuse me, not like that. These GPSs are a amazing thing to have to uh, understand. To Yandina. There we go. Direct route. That's what we wanted. Get rid of the cursor. Okay. And that's our route. Um, if we look at the charts. We're on the apron here. I finally got Simlink updated, so this works now. Uh, we're going to taxi out to take off. Uh, let me just grab the weather, actually. I admit that. Matthew says, the engine might start if the flight was not many hours before. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, so Matthew's saying this is not, not for failures and so on. This is for normal operations. That's what it's set up to simulate. So, so my uh, my lack of ability is is, um, is not really the, the intended use case. Let's see if I can grab... I'm just wondering if there is any MET station at this airport. Because this is, of course, a very unusual part of the world for us to be flying. And I am curious to see... So they currently have calm winds. Temperature 25 degrees with a dew point 24. Wow, that is pretty humid. Uh, and that means we can take off from whichever runway we fancy. So I'm going to vote for the shortest taxi. So we're just going to go out and take off from runway 06. We could load that into here, but it's really not going to be worth it. Uh, we're going to fly a procedure later on. We're going to fly some GPS approaches, hopefully, if I can manage. And we'll also fly some uh, an NDB at the end. So 6,000 feet. Here's a little autopilot panel of one variety and then we have the the more traditional one here which i do really like it's also got the trim wheel assigned so you can see trim in motion on there which is pretty good it's got the trimmers set correctly with the trimmers down here so you've got a rudder trimmer and um, there's your pitch trim pretty good so set that into the takeoff range i like that and there is another one it's, it's sort of hidden down here the adon trimmer hopefully you're not going to need that adon trim is very unusual to need rudder trim very common in turbo props uh, Matthew says, we do not model non-standard uses, or in less nice words, pilots who mess up. <laughs> uh, if you want that, it's not the product you should buy. There you go. So that's uh, that's pretty fair, I think. Let's get the lights on. Let's see how it's looking on the outside. There we go. Got the nav lights. Is that landing lights on? Or are they on already? I'm able to turn them off now. Probably more appropriate. So we're going to taxi out to the runway just behind us. We're going to take off to 6,000 feet. Uh, MSA wise it's, it's all pretty low the island is much higher as we head over there uh, but there's no particular departure that uh, I'm going to fly because I'm not heading to any of these waypoints we're just going direct so it doesn't really matter but we do have as you can see there are some proper departures out of here could be good fun we might have to revisit this in a 320 because 320 still operate here uh, right let's go so flaps for takeoff we're going to go with 10 got your little indicator up here There we go, 10 degrees of flat. And I will wait to find out everything that's wrong with what I've done <laughs> soon. Brake released, and let's go for a ride. So. Very maneuverable on the ground, as you would expect. Luckily we've got high wings, so we can, uh, and I don't think, won't even need the high wing feature. I was going to say we could pass the wing over that near jet. Citation. Oh, 
Right, this first flight, very short, 30 minutes to go on this first one, so we can have a look at some systems. Flap indicator really nice. Yeah, it's nice to have that right there, right in front of you. Um, oh, we've got a Junkers 52, excellent. That's probably quite appropriate, speed-wise. <laughs> so, here we go. Uh, Lauren B says, Max Cruise on the 300 is 182 knots. I don't have the Kodiak Google. No, I don't. And he says, ground behavior is seriously special. I really liked driving this on the um, on the ground, or on the water, sorry. I thought that was great fun. Right, down we go. What else would we need to do before takeoff? Well, definitely a flight control check. Let's check that. Look at that. You can even see, see a bit of a pitch just from that prop wash. <laughs> Done the rudder, and there's a noseable steering tiller, by the way, which the, the rear aircraft does have. We don't have that modelled here, I don't think. Uh, yeah, if you're seeing it blurry, then it's probably something to do with the streaming or your internet or my internet. One of, one of those <laughs> uh, wouldn't surprise me. All right, boost pumps are on for takeoff. We've got the flap set, we've got the trim set. Don't think there's any engine run up we need to do in particular, especially not without any ice issues. Right, let's spin it around. And there is something I would want to do. I will do, I'm going to spin around and we we'll just set up the cameras as well. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> this is very much turned into a, a, a group flight. Very good brakes, really responsive. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Put this back. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do was sort out. I think there's going to be more work done on those cameras. <laughs> Some of them are a little bit out of line at the moment. Berman says this is definitely not that indeed. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the follow uh, to Weza. Right, so we're going to take off. Climb 6,000 feet. As you can see on our GPS, we're going to head off to the left. 6,000 feet, and we're going to cruise at... We need to aim to cruise. I think uh, I know the fuel flow we're aiming for, so we're going to adjust the power once we get going. I'm sure we'll get some good advice for that. Uh, right, let's give it a go. So let me just check I do have the manual open over here We've done the start of sequence and then just see after start we need both engines obviously and then we're going to put the battery switch to the battery that's what we're doing because we started on battery uh, and then going to remove those we're at max RPM so we should have started in feather okay we'll do it next time generator switches can be moved to reset and then on which we've done and uh, we check the generator loads which are negative good right we've got the doors unlocked light is off we've just got the pneumatic low pressure warning light and that's fine. Got hydraulic pressure. Belts and buckles are checked. Cabin is secured. Okay. Trim is set for takeoff. Propellers are full power, so max RPM is available. Right, auto feather switch. That's right. Where's the auto feather switch? Is there a switch for auto feather or is that going to be automatically done? That's something I was looking for. And where is the auto feather switch if there is one? I put Auto feather test. Uh, parking brake. It's down here. There's a few things hidden down here. Fuel. It's an off refuel, so that's for refueling. Battery temperature. Click the lights. Top main panel right in front of you. Here we go. Right, here we go. Right, 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 right. Auto feather, auto feather. Push on off, select auto feather arm. There we go. Excellent. Thanks very much. <laughs> so auto feather arm is important because if the engines fail and they don't feather, they will drag you into the ground. It creates a huge amount of drag. So, uh, so there we go. 
um, that is very important. That screaming is a flat. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that, but yeah. But again, this is a beat of build, so there's some the sounds sometimes come in where they're not necessarily wanted. Uh, we don't need the bleed air because we're not using the icing or the heater. It's very hot out there. We've done the control checks. Engines are all good. Anti collision lights are on. Great. So rotate speeds going to be in the region of mid 70 mid 70 knots okay let's go everyone's here ready to go right brakes released so you'll see you can over talk the engines so i'm going to be careful with that and you they do provide <laughs> the the data so you, i think there's the charts in the manual so you can actually set it to the correct torque for takeoff but not not an underpowered airplane so absolutely no trouble there we go already it's 70 plus knots so just gently rotating into the air positive climb there's no gear to raise just going to trim it out a little bit a little bit of nose up trim needed there Ooh. you can see it just just accelerating away it's uh, it has plenty of power behind it oh that's interesting my trim wheel has reversed since i uh, last used it which is strange because i did set it up <laughs> earlier that's a bit annoying that's my fault okay climbing away accelerated don't need the flaps anymore we'll get rid of those you have to learn how to trim in reverse now for this sector and then adjust that on the next one transition to a sort of on route climb bringing the power back from takeoff power and there's an f18 <laughs> let's head left let's see what we can figure out climb up to 6000 Just going to bring the RPM back as well. Quite normal to climb at a reduced RPM. Again, the settings that you should actually aim for are available. Let's get pick up our rooms. 2,000 feet already. Incredible climb rate. Can't believe that trim. says if you over an engine dozens of things happen and you go smuggle them all low voltage there you go so you're talking about the abnormals pretty cool scenery around this part of the world though so it would be nice to fly from but yeah we are roaring away four corners in a 748 <laughs> very basic autopilot available on this we'll talk about it uh, later we should have a CDI available there we go oh we've got a nav flag Heading mode. There is a nav mode. Wouldn't need any, um, no risk of needing icing on this one. At this temperature, it's uh, unlikely to build up. Airframe icing, I'm talking about, of course. Carburetor icing would be very likely. Or possible. Do need to keep an eye out because, as you can see, there are some big, big, big mountains around this part of the world. Or big hills, not big mountains, perhaps. Right. So let's try out the autopilot. So it's going to have a basic mode. So we're going to engage the autopilot in bring the heading mode round. You can see it's automatically trying to level us off. So I'm curious. If I press IS. It climb. No, I don't think it will. It's not really designed for the vertical mode so much. Just get the heading. Mode engaged. Heading. There it goes. So I'll press Alt and put 6 in the window. Warning that we're not there. And if I press IS, will it climb to it? No. Not interested. Get rid of the auto feather reason is at this point even if uh, an engine fails we'll have enough height and speed to to get the aircraft back under control still on gps yeah so i 
that's why I was expecting this to work because we have the GPS route in here and it is active so that's what I was expecting um, apparently not but that's fine I will work that one out later <laughs> um, anyway time to climb so disengage out mode and we'll fly it ourselves You actually see it lights up when the autopilot retrims the airplane. <laughs> right, let's go to 6,000. There is a vertical speed mode. Yeah. How how do I engage that? The dark thing is, I've flown the Twin Otter on the channel before, and I feel like I have remembered less of this airplane than any other I've ever flown on the channel. I'm going to leave the boost pumps on. That's one thing I do know. Yeah, the autopilot discount noise is, is quite satisfying in this one, definitely. Oh, I see. So that's suggesting we should use this unit. And then there's the VS. You can set the altitude. Five hundred feet per minute. Is that going to work? Ah, there it goes. Always the answer is always in chat. <laughs> so some of the sounds rhyme with the Millennium Falcon. Last stage. Good to see you. I hope you're doing very well. We're doing well. Thank you. Booty too, good to see you. Booty is sitting in a yacht. Very good. Oh, you're making us very jealous. 28 hours sail to Cairns to meet Norwich being at home. Okay, there's a lot to answer for. Well, we'll see you, uh, see you soon, Booty. But uh, yeah, that does sound very nice. <laughs> uh, Jason can join us at Alpha Golf Golf Yankee. Right, so yeah, what am I doing wrong here? Why am I not getting a, a GPS course bar? Do I need to engage nav on here? Let's go on this side. This one's not used at all. So I'm hoping it's going to level at six. We shall see. I really don't know. Not many nav aids <laughs> around here. That's something I do know see here we're heading along this effectively along this airway I suppose we're going outbound from the Honiara VOR 1136 so we can tune that 1136 so to do that we're going to I need to push that there we go 113 it's good to use the GPS every now and then just to remind me 1136 there we go and we could change that to VOR now adjust the course bar to fly outbound. Let's see if we pick it up. This is behind us. There it is. See you, Captain Moustache. I'm doing my best with the chat. I'm doing my best. But um, it's. Uh, proving difficult uh, in terms of keeping up with the chat uh, whilst also streaming so anyway here we go we've got level VS at zero bring the talk back bring the props back make it a little bit quieter Yeah, the outbound force deviation does seem a little bit broken. So I'm guessing it could be to do with this HSI. Uh, that's probably, probably what's going on there. So that would, uh, that would be my guess. Because I feel like that's, that's what I would expect to do with it. Anyway, we'll go back into heading mode. Get it round. 6,000 feet, just above the clouds, which is a nice level to cruise at. Yeah, we can relax a little bit. That was Navigraph I was using for the charts there.
Skipper Jeff asks, when you get established in flight, uh, do the autopilot white buttons light up like the ADF transponder buttons when you turn the instrument lights? I think they are all, uh, yeah, I think they're lit, definitely, yeah. Yeah, these are all lit from behind down here. Well, somebody out there might want to see us. Okay, so regaining our track, zoom out a bit. Okay, it's Aggie, and let's just see if there's any weather station. I'd be very surprised if there is. No, surprise, surprise, there's not. Uh, assuming it's similar as it's only half an hour up the road with light winds and this is <laughs> this is uh, yeah this is why it's an interesting part of the world to fly around you know, beautiful beautiful islands skip says the autopilot buttons do not look lit uh which ones are you referring to these ones they seem lit to me we can always check of course magic of microsoft flight simulator there you go that's what's lit at the moment and I haven't configured the lighting, that's just uh, <laughs> what it uh, has come with. So there you go, those are lit. Interestingly, our uh, artificial horizon is, <laughs> is not lit. Might, uh, might need to do some searching for some bulbs uh, in a minute. But yeah, I can assure you those are lit. The uh, ADF and so on. Uh, these ones aren't, I see, if you're talking about these. Simon says, I saw in a YouTube video from the real life Solomon's operation that they leave the left engine running at the smaller airfields while the passengers are parked using bar. Ah, that's something to try. Yeah, good idea. Let's try that one. Let's see if we can make that work. Sorry, uh, Jeff. Yeah, I was looking. The NDB ones are, but no, you're right. These autopilot, this autopilot panel is not lit. Andrew says, as a pilot, what are your thoughts on the discussion for the future of fuel and aviation? Do you think hydrogen is the way of power? Uh, to liquid synthetic jet fuel that's it's beyond beyond my abilities oh yeah you would have probably want that on uh, it's beyond my abilities to know which of those fuels definitely obviously sustainable fuel but in terms of which one there'll be much much smarter people working very carefully to figure out which one's going to be feasible the group seems to be overtaking us <laughs> Right, there we go, right, heading back around a bit more. Very light winds here. Let's see, what's the required track? We need 260, we need 283, so we need to bring the heading back around. 27, 28. So that course bar is on the correct desired track, that is on 283. Curiosity. What I want to do is we're going up here. Uh, we're going to go up Yankee. It does have some charts. So I want to see if I can load up the GPS approach. This is basically a grass strip, so there's not really a whole lot to see when we get there. But effectively, this will be straight in. So let's see if I can manage that. Flight plan, menu, select approach, GPS 3.0, that's it, via, yeah, uh, no, we want GGSB, that one, straight in. Should I have activated that? Oh no, there it is. Good, so that's going to take us off to the left a bit. 
and there you go we can see the course bar's updated so for some reason it's not active but it is it is somehow connected actually says first time for everything but I guess the DC6 will be a bit quick for this flight yeah DC6 will be a bit quick and also a little bit big as you'll see shortly thanks for those follows right how many miles have we got to go then so getting there in 10 minutes not long at all and for this approach MSA's 3-2 to the south but we're going to head in 3,200 feet at GGYSB and then we can descend down to 1,900 after that Course 29 inbound, minima 950. So we have a radio altimeter. Give it a bit of a test. And one says 950. So 100, 200, 300, it's pretty high up. So that is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There, Let's see if that comes to life. What's our fuel flow as well? I need about. Four. Oh, we're doing well. We're actually light on fuel, so I'm probably going a bit slowly. A little bit slowly. Uh, yeah, so down to 3 2. Pick up the three, 299 inbound. Couldn't really fly this approach down to minimums without coupled. GPS of some variety, I would imagine. So we'll be going visual when we can. Heading in. Billy Sim Pilot, uh, thank you very much for your five pound super chat. Really appreciate it. Billy Sim Pilot says, "Evening. Been watching your tutorial videos for the last year and a half or so. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. First life stream I've caught. Thank you so much, Billy Sim Pilot. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, the donation and glad the video has been helpful. That's very kind. Thank you so much. Um, let's go down to three two then." In theory, down. How do we do it last time? Three, two, yeah. Three, two. You can see this is not my sort of autopilot. <laughs> I really don't know what uh, what the technique is for this. How do we convince it to actually descend? Ooh, where's it going now? Interesting. Press out button, then down. Out, down. There we go. So it does transfer across to there. And it's descending. See the speed running away. So I'm just going to power back. Is it flying in nav mode now? It says heading. So if I press nav, where is it going? Taking us to that line. So maybe we do have a coupled nav mode. Anyway, there we are reaching 3.2. Speed's coming back. In terms of configuring, first stage of flat can run at 103 knots, and then we get the prop levers to full increase fully forward. And uh, then 20 degrees for a normal landing. I think we're full flat for this one as it's pretty short. So should turn the corner in a second if it is truly in nav. There it goes. Okay, it's working out. Down to 1900 feet now. So if I set that on here, that seems easier. Still in, it's doing 600 feet a minute. Turning the corner. Okay, it's starting to work out. I'm going to leave the autopilot to trim it out because of my atrocious settings. Where I've got it all set wrong beeping away so we get within 1,000 feet of our level off. So 1,900 feet, we can run at 1,900 up until GGYSI. 
from GGYS I, we stay at 1900, sending a GGYS F. From there, in here, it descends, and usually it's not a continuous descent. It wants us to level off again. But actually, if we do 4.6 to GGYSM, that is a good place to actually descend. At 3 degrees. Oh no, it's not, it's not descending. Come on. Five, 500 more than enough. Definitely don't have those landing lights on. That very much looks like the off position to me. So there they are, nevertheless. Yeah, we can have a go at stalling it on the next one. Uh, Misha asks, are you friends with Flight Data Sim? Uh, no, I'm not friends with Flight Data Sim. But, uh, not to say we're not friendly, but uh, what I mean by that is I, I don't have any uh, outside affiliation with Flight Data Sim. If that makes sense. Okay, GGYSI. Going to stay there at 1900. Make sure we do actually level off. And then we're going to head along all the way to YSF and past it a bit more. We want 4.6 to the YSM, so that will hopefully be displayed on here. Yeah, 1.1 to YSI. Oh, this is really making my head work having to use these. So for landing then, we're going to get full flap on this one. Approach speed. 77 knots would be at flat 20, so a bit slower. Along the lines of uh, 70 knots. Maybe that's too slow. Blue lines are 80. Maybe we'll stick to 77. Just have a bit more power on. Please level off. There it goes. Leveling off at 1900. That's very good. Thanks for the help with that. So that autopilot, I was. The RW Design one, you use this panel and these a bit more um, and I don't remember using this so yeah this is a different set of, set up of avionics probably the more realistic version this more modern sort of retrofit version so that you can do these RNAV approaches and so on or GPS approaches interesting that pressure thing has gone so it's quite happy now now we're doing our fuel yeah, barely used any. Barely used any. I wonder if there's a useful... Yeah, so a lot of this won't be really relevant. <laughs> it's funny how long it took me to realise this. Well, I never did realise this was for the wrong aeroplane. <laughs> but uh, I knew something was up. But that's all right make it work. So, YSF coming up. We'll see, we're going to leave, presumably engine 2 would be left running. So we'll leave this engine running, that's just some forward, and then we'll get going. This is the this is an incredibly small airport. Hopefully I'll be able to see the runway. We have had trouble with group flights where um, there's so many of us that <laughs> it's not that easy. Paddy F says, Airbus and Boeing pilots are sworn enemies, of course. Exactly, exactly. And we are barely moving. I thought this approach would happen a bit quicker. So 4.6 to YSM, that's the important one. Let's get the first bit of flap out, give ourselves some room. Gonna get power back a little bit, just increase the RPM. Okay, go flap 10. That's gonna really mess up the trim. So there's the indicator. You mess up low pressure coming back again, there we go. They are good, that's working. Right, 
Right, current ground speed is, should be up here. Ground speed 100, so we need to do 500 feet. Uh, sorry, no, we need to do... Yeah, 500 feet per minute at 100. Right, I don't know why that's so complicated for me. 4.5 distance for the descent. 4.6 to GGYSM. Which is already passed, apparently. <laughs> see if it will just. I wonder if it will just leave the altitude. Probably won't. No. All right then. All right then. Time to take out the autopilot and fly this. So, disengage lever there. We get that cool noise. Getting a bit fast for those flaps. That's my trim wheel. I can't believe my trim wheel is reversed. I tried this earlier. <laughs> What happens? Right, get flat 20 out. Getting back to 77. Now, I think I did have a look earlier. The runway is just this grass strip here, so we'll just make do with that. Ninety knots. It's a different pace of things in this airplane. It is nice. Calculation for the three degrees was just the, the ground speed divided by two times ten, depending how you want to do it. Some people timed it by five. So 100 times five, 500 feet per minute. Works easy on 100, but otherwise it's uh, easier the other way. Storm, exactly. Half it, now to zero. That's what I end up doing. <laughs> Well, we're pretty stable here. I do need to increase the RPM. You need it at the max RPM for a go around. So they're coming on. We've got the fuel pumps on. Speed stable at 90. We need to get that back a bit. We are just heading a bit fast here. Let's go 30 flaps. Gonna have to add a bit of power now, getting the drag on. Let's go for 30. I think that's minimums, reasonable. Minimums. Oh, the minimums worked. That's good. Everybody whizzing past. A massive retrim to do that. Yeah. Right, let's adjust, adjust the seat accordingly. I've got to say. Well, I did my preview video using a um, using my joystick, and it is a lot, lot nicer flying this with the yoke. And I haven't changed the sensitivity axis. It just seems to really, really works well with it. I think that's to do with the sensitivity of the pitch. Getting fast here. Turbo props are, are quite difficult to judge the. Um, they're quite difficult to judge the power setting on because of course the propeller RPM doesn't change as you change power so it's it's a bit of an odd one like that thanks John thanks for flying along we'll see you next time so yeah there's I'm not sure where the actual runway is somewhere in this clearing so we're just going to set it down Zinc in the middle here bit of a twin otter dive I think that building on the right is the sort of terminal. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Nose wheel down, then we can use the brakes. Everyone seems to have loaded up up there. I'm going to go back to that building. I think that's going to be the terminal. Love landing with the shadow like that. Right, a bit of a backtrack. Bring the flaps up to 10, ready to go again. Just going to do a very quick drop off. The next sector we're going to fly a bit higher, 8,000 feet. Oh, it doesn't like the grass. We don't have the, the bigger wheels on.
No good. That's <laughs> probably a bit fast. <laughs> right. Doesn't seem to be much of an apron. But we can off-road it. That's the whole point of this. Oh, there's a bit of an apron. We did miss it. VR Flight Sim Guy, you get to see here. VR Flight Sim Guy, obviously, very famous YouTuber, focusing on the virtual reality headsets. But thanks for joining us. Yeah, we got we got away. I think we got away with that landing. Right, so let's bring it to a stop. Set the brake. Let's see if we can work this out. So, we're going to shut down engine number one only. So, to do that, we've engine two on. We could feather number two, I suppose. So, we do that. Is that going to feather them enough? Doesn't seem to be changing the RPM much. Right, there we go, and we're going to cut off the fuel to number one from the feather position. I'm curious if this keeps any load on the number two generator. It does. So the right generator is online. That's good to know. So we are now sitting with. One engine in feather, but running, giving us power. Passengers can join us. Lots and lots of seats on this one. So. Where is the click spot? Where has it gone? Oh, it's that, obviously. Okay. They're going to join us. We're going to set up our route, so we're going to be 8,000 feet and this time. Just going to clear this out. Delete. Then we're going to go from AGGY. There we go. It knows. Yeah, and then we're going to go to... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, don't do this to me. That's my fault. Pretty happy with that. We managed to do a GPS approach of sorts until we're visual. Enter. Please work. Yes. Now we can twist it to A G G S. But we're actually going to take a routing via salad. So let's see if we can find that waypoint. I'm sorry. Uh, this is um, I'm sorry, I'm missing all the chat. I, I do apologise. It's normally I'm better at it, but uh, obviously this is quite relatively high workload. It's T salads. Eight miles away. Is that going to be our departure? We're going from H T Y. It's anyway, no, so we're going out by salads, uh, and then we're going to go to Avap. It's amazing how these these are the GPSs you get when people who use them regularly, you'll see them do this in seconds. It's, it's amazing. I've never been that good at it. Going to A. 
No, come on. A G. GS Airports, please. Thank you very much. Good. So that is the flight plan. Looks pretty reasonable. There it is. Hopping over to another island. Uh, and this is then going to lead us to our last very short hop after that. Right. That's good. 8,000 feet in the window. Flaps are set to 10. I think that's all going to work. Got our landing lights on. I see the prop <laughs> further over there. It's a lot easier on the real things, is it, MH? Yeah, I agree with that. Everyone agrees, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Dougal says, I think there's a fix to use the keyboard. Ah, that's probably something I should have done. <laughs> probably something I should have done. Uh, Ebos, thanks so much, Ebos, for the $11.41. Really appreciate it. Ebos says, nice stream count. Love the island hopping flights and a nice group flight as well. Thanks, Ebos. Glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm actually, I'm <laughs> I, uh, I, I misjudged the workload for, um, streaming on two platforms and doing a group flight <laughs> and uh and flying a new airplane so uh, i do apologize oh look at that wheel out in the grass love it so let's close up the door they're all on nice and safely very happy i'm sure let's get engine number one started so we are all clear we don't need any external power to do that start the left Crash says, currently 3D printing my own for Microsoft Flight Simulator for this very reason. There you go. The uh, Flight Sim guy says, it's excellent, but needs work. I have a video on the channel holding up for the full release version. There you go. So the uh, Flight Sim guys, uh, yeah, also taking a look then. And I'm exactly the same. Looking forward to the release. Do these work? Hey, wipers. Always love wipers. They got sounds ready as well. Oh, oh they don't park you got to drag it up to park. There you go. And the park system works. I like it. <laughs> Good, that's worked. Props forwards. Okay, let's set that trim. Okay, what I'm going to do, stand by everybody. I'm just going to, while those are props come up, I'm just going to adjust the trim. So I'm just going to put you back on the other screen for a second. But thank you again to Evos for the very kind tip. Really appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back. Now, has that worked? Please say that's worked. Nose down, nose up, yeah. I can't believe that. Like I said, I practiced this earlier today. <laughs> earlier today, would you believe? I'm sure you wouldn't. Right, okay, 8,000 feet. Everyone's clear, as clear as they're going to be. We're going to taxi out, and I'm definitely taking off towards the sea. I'm not interested in taking off towards those trees. Calm winds, won't be a problem. Fuel pumps are on. Oh, yeah, how much fuel do we need? We needed, we needed a bit more for this one, because the alternate's changed. We need 1.4, so let's top up on the fuel. Fuel, please take a bit extra. So 1.4 tons would be. Get that, make sure I get that right. Yeah, we need about three. Are we going to be able to fit that on? Not quite. <laughs> hmm, that is just the alternate. I'm going to just announce that the alternate is where we're starting from. <laughs> so we're going to go with about what we had before. So about 2,000 pounds worth of fuel. The trip fuel is going to be very small. Good, so that'll be fine. Good, right. Fuel up, ready to go. Brakes released. Let's go. RPM's out. Which is that? Ah, oh, love it. F fourteen, always welcome. 
So we're going to do a bit of a backtrack, clear all around, which is probably the biggest light ever said on the channel. I'm going to take off in the reverse and then make a departure back around. And he says the release version 7 has window wiper sounds. Excellent, excellent. We do like those sorts of details. And this is Maggie says the stream is awesome. Uh, I just wish to take our, uh, the Twin Otter was out already. Only two more days. <laughs> Excellent. Glad you're enjoying it. This is Maggie. Will says love you, Twato. There you go. Wild Rumble says, did I see the screen washer switch? You did indeed. Did indeed. <laughs> yeah, we'll try out the boots on this sector. This is another 30 minute sector. Now we've got, we've got to go to the autopilot. This is very much a learning experience for me. Okay, let's spin it around and see if we can spin it around on the spot. Maybe not in the grass. <laughs> there we go. Right, trim was set. Things that you would always be doing in any airplane before taking off include a flight control check several times. All good, we've got our flap set to 10. Gonna rotate it uh, again about the 70 knots mark. Climb up to 8,000 feet, making a turn on ourselves. Okay, right. Let's go, Let's see that Tomcat <laughs> makes it off. Now I'm trying not to overspeed the flaps on this one. a bit longer, a bit slower on the grass. 60, 70. Oh, into the air we go. Pass the car, gear up. And my trim wheel now works. Oh, that's so much better. It's almost, it's it's so disorientating trying to use a trim wheel in reverse after obviously years of flying it the right way around. Okay, let us, there's a DC6 out there, lovely. Let's make a right turn back round. Lowering the nose, bringing the flaps up. Bringing the power back. Bringing the RPM back. There we go. JB says, thought I was going to miss the rest of the flight. Had to do a water change on my fish tank. Very good, always important. Got to do those water changes. What sort of fish tank have you got, JB? Oh, there's a GPWS system working. So, gear is up, flaps are up. Zoom out a bit and we'll see our route. Climbing a bit higher for this sector, a bit of a longer cruise. Nick F says, can you do a raw data overhead commencing IOS tutorial? I think we've done that on streams before, but um, yeah, that could be a consideration for a tutorial. I assume in the Airbus. Seatbelts fast and says VR flights are going. Indeed, indeed. Okay, right. 110 knot climb, pretty, pretty good climb speed. And crash Ed's just done a water change on the tropical tank. Oh, we're going to turn, uh, can we turn aquarium hobby into another part of this channel? Long pizza. JB says, the one I did tonight has two pairs of angelfish in it. So majestic and pretty, but as messy as any. There you go. Very nice. Angelfish, beautiful fish. Ed has a tropical tank. So Ed, what have you got in yours? All right, climbing away. So we're getting to get to this autopilot. So we do have vertical modes. We're going up to 8,000. Let's go. Autopilot. I'm going to start off with heading. And just use that to head over there. I suppose we could just go straight to nav. Nav. There it goes. It's going to fly us in here. That seems to be working. Uh, and then we're on out. So out. What's 3, 4. So it's just trying to level off. So let's go to 8 down here and then set the VS. 
I reckon we can do a thousand feet per minute. Let's see. So there's a thousand feet per minute. Joining our roots. Good stuff. It's coming together. It's coming together. We're getting there. I like that, just shutting down one engine. That worked really nicely. We'll leave the lights on as we've got so many aeroplanes around. And we're going to be word above the clouds on this. Ed's got some angelfish. Excellent. And catfish. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Captain, uh, Captain Gibbs says, do you know what the benefit of having a throttle at the ceiling of the flight deck rather than the centre pedestal? Uh, and Tony says, the throttle is on the overhead because there was nowhere else to put it. Yeah, that, that could be the reason. It could have been hard to get access in and out of the flight deck if you did have a throttle quadrant down here. They clearly worked hard to avoid it. You can notice there's only one trim set over here. Uh, the FO presumably having to just reach across. Um, so it could have been a space issue. Uh, the Aerosoft sort of on the loading screens the, the, it suggests that the reason was simplicity so more robust if you only got to have a cable from here down to the wing and over there as opposed to having to find a way to route the cabling down the sides underneath the floor and then back up into a throttle quadrant so that could be another reason just to keep it as simple as possible There you go, Matt Warren says the reason is because it was easier to connect the throttles to the engines. Still climbing. Accelerated to 130, doing very well on this one. See our estimated time on route at the moment, 35 minutes, but that'll drop quickly when we accelerate a bit. Dana J Suresh. Sorry Dana J, having a few incidents, a few crash of desktops. Not good, not good at all. says less maintenance as there's more dirt on the ground than in the ceiling there you go yeah that's true <laughs> more robust system they don't have to have those covers on these because of course they're out of the way the little dirt's going to fall out as opposed to collect in so the airbus has got all sorts of fancy things to cover it up most most airliners do i can even adjust the friction look at that very good a little noise ah should i have reset the generators oh well we haven't Ah, here we go, taxi, pizza heat. I well, probably don't need that. We'll do the video in a moment. Once we've leveled off, we can start messing around. Excellent formation flying as ever by uh, <laughs> some members. first marker so I didn't reset the generators but they are yeah they seem to be taking the strain battery is charging so that's a good sign that we've got electrical power from some other source other than the battery before it goes dark that's me to go and you notice it does have an approach so it will fly the approach but uh, it just seems the HSI is just not quite up to speed Dave says, have you placed your order for the Vajra yet? That's the, is that the new VR headset? Of course, VR Flights and Guy will be the uh, expert on that, but uh, I believe I've seen some talk of a new, very advanced one. No worries, J-Bay. Yeah, no, starting, it does take a while to start up this thing. <laughs> no doubt about that. It takes a bit of commitment. Oliver says, I will subscribe put notifications, but do you know when your next stream is? I don't know for sure when my next stream is. If you join our Discord, I'll always put it up a day before on the Discord, unless it's sort of a more casual Twitch style stream. Uh, so that's that's the normal sort of way. So usually 24 hours before. It's a little bit random now because I am back uh, flying, which is great news. It used to be more regular 
you know Sunday afternoons were a classic streaming day but um, thankfully I'm often working so that's changed but there's a Tomcat but uh, yeah it's um, it's uh, I'd always give a day's notice guy says it's a special experience with the aero no question bit cheap heads like the g2 are also really fantastic to use in this thing there you go. so it's quite expensive yeah i did i did i think i did look up the price it's like a thousand pounds or something quite it was it was no doubt expensive right here we go then 150 time down to 25 minutes oh, we're not, not picking up as much time as i thought but let's set a bit of a cruise rpm say the passengers ears might find we get a bit of a speed increase out of that because as great as it is to have those propellers at high RPM for power reasons, especially near the grounds, it doesn't work as you go higher up and you're trying to get, it's like going into a higher gear. You can only go so fast in first gear, even if it does allow the car to accelerate a bit quicker. j says, at least the group flight say got some air power tanking on. Exactly, yeah, we have a, uh, what's the F-14's category? Interceptor? Strike? Pilot Pili, good to see you. Pilot Pili, another streamer. Great to have you here. Hope you're doing very well. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for joining us. Asky says, how can I reach your group? Uh, if you just go to Microsoft Flight Simulator, you should be able to see us on the, if you go to North Europe server, and you can click on us and just load up. What heading are you trying to follow? I'm actually trying to just follow a desired track of 285, which you can see the course bar has set to. Wind is obviously coming slightly from the left. So that's what we're doing. Sadly, we won't get a wind readout on a GPS because it doesn't know what the aeroplane is doing. It's just working on what it can see, the actual motion. It doesn't know what our airspeed is on this. I should probably update this. It's from sector 2 now, which is AGG Y2. It's always great to see real world pilots flight simming on their days off. That really shows your passion for aviation. Yeah, it's it's well, flight sim's always been always been something I've done, and then we are really treated at the moment with the the variety and the amount of different aircraft, and then the uh, different airliners we've had for X Plane Eleven and Microsoft Flight Simulator this last year. So I've been flying things that i've always been interested in like 757 747 200 was our last twitch stream while i was figuring that one out so that's going to be coming in a, a proper stream soon we'll fly the 747 200 on a route which is great fun we're going to learn to do radio navigation on that as well as of course ins navigation which took a whole lot of audience participation before we could figure out how to use the ins so uh yeah i look forward to uh to flying that aircraft again uh, but yeah no i do do enjoy it the only, the, the, the only problem is, of course, just making sure there's the right right time. I'm not even sure I like that view. I think I prefer, prefer looking out down out of these windows. So there's the FO side. You can click on these doors. We won't do it now, of course, but they do they do click open. Look at that reflection. Amazing stuff. That's just great. All the standby instruments seem to be working just fine, yeah. So we're going to do a bit of de-icing, so bleed error on, then we can do props, but well, that won't look very exciting. Uh, we can tell there's a lot of panels for this one. F-14 is multi-role, multi-role would be the name, F we've got multi-role air support, carrier based insects are air superiority, oh that's my favourite one, air superiority, I like that as a name, you want to fly an air superiority fighter, okay let's try out, wings in a left stab, manual, is that going to work, are there any other indications, the Dash 8 had a boot system like this, so what this does is, it, uh, we might have to go back in the drone, 
Go back to the free camera. Oh, why does it do that? That is endlessly irritating when you're trying to film videos. So the these boots made of rubber and they're designed they got these sort of strips and air gets pumped into them and they're designed to break off the ice. So they don't prevent ice building up, they just break it off when it does. So they actually turn on and off in sequence. So the Ah, and it said stab, but it's not like we haven't fitted on this one. Uh, but yeah, so they they would inflate and break it off. So they don't run all the time because, of course, if they stayed inflated all the time, the ice would just build up around them, and then how would you break it off? So they have to deflate. It's very important they deflate, let it build up, break to snap it off, and cycle and cycle like that. Which is it's not an amazing system. It works, but it's it's prone to problems because it's a lot of moving parts, a lot of mechanical things. You can get leaks in the boots. You can get water that gets in there and then freezes. So it's not great. And of course, all the while that you were using these, although they're breaking off the ice, it rebuilds. So the airplane is actually flying with ice on it. So it's not as efficient as a heated wing, which doesn't even let the ice build up. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very good. You've got to be careful as well, because if you run them continuously and don't allow ice to build up, same for heated wings, actually. So let's say, let's imagine this isn't a boot. This is a normal sort of jetliner heated wing. The ice was trying to build up here, and melts if you heat it up then it will run back over this cold surface here and then freeze and you've got no way to the ice in here so uh, yeah that is all the, the fun of, of flying through ice so we even in aircraft equipped for it we don't like sitting in ice but we'll do quite a bit to stay out of it and in a twin otter i imagine you would be even more careful because it slower aircraft like this will pick up ice much more easily than a jet there it goes Uh, caravan flying right behind us. Storm said, I used to fire the defender with them and you had to wait till the ice builds up quite a bit before inflating the boots, otherwise it can cause other issues. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Tony says, that is what caused the crashes in the early APRs. I did not know that. I didn't know that. So the, the Q400 could have handled everyone reckons the engines are very powerful so the reason you'd put boots on is that they take less less pressure out of the engines because of course the air doesn't have to be hot and it just gets tapped off the engine and is used to inflate it's a relatively small part of the wing because you won't do the whole wing at once that will be sort of stages or oh, certainly on the dash maybe maybe on the Trinoster it does but uh, yeah it's oh these boots here is there boots and these struts there's a good bass how funny. I did not know that. Are these the icing boots? Can't believe they are. Maybe. Anyway, the builds up really. I don't think they are though. That is just a protection plate. But yeah, so it's um, it's possible that they just do some sort of outer in it. How is this aircraft? It looks like it's completely glued to us. Tomcat always shows its uh, swept wing, I think. I'm imagining they're actually full flat, full wings open. Dougal's in the F-18, are they? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 is that... Uh, what do we see, Dougal? It's the future. Oh, is Dougal in one of these? Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> so close, we don't even get to see the name tag. Yeah, I figured there'd be no point going on that soon because there wouldn't be enough uh, any controllers out here. You know, it doesn't seem to have any animation on the outside at this point, so I will put that back to. Let's just see. Yeah, you can wing in and wing outer. Extend intake deflector. Ah, interesting. So I don't know what that is, but. your gear is down so I wonder if there's an 
intake reflector. Oh, someone in the chat might know what that is. With turboprop engines, they obviously inhale air at the front and then it exhausts it uh, here. So the air comes in and it actually reverses, I think, twice in this engine. It's a very strange design, but yeah, it, it, it's not like our normal actual sort of flow. And you're going to have, oh, that's the wing inspection light. Um, you're going to have ice that could build up. So by reversing the flow of the air, and the dash 8 there used to go in and then up. Uh, you can ice that might have built up around the intake or in the intake will break off and you don't want it going through all the turbines so or compressor stages so or, oh there you go micro fakey thanks that's a good one it, it could be an inertial separator like TBM but anyway uh, there's a you can separate it out by changing the airflow and so on and then you'll have a little door to let it get out of the way so I'm wondering if that's, uh, that, that's what that's talking about I like this livery very very smart bleed air off yeah so no no hope of pressurizing <laughs> the strobe lights on turn the lights on not really achieving much what's the temperature outside oh it's still still above 10 degrees celsius excellent making good time 15 minutes to go let's pull up chart for AGGS Lots of happy passengers for this one, I'm pretty sure. Right, so this is AGGS, even shorter, 900 meters. Might be a problem, hopefully. Coral grass. Wow. Tony says it's an internal engine component. There we go, thanks very much. Ed says, I think there's a vent somewhere that moves. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, there is a GPS approach for one zero. So let's do that. Just passing add that. Let's go flight plan menu. Oh, select approach. I'll have one zero. By gimmicks, we want actually to go by the box. There we go. Now just do a bit of a left turn. Taking us to the pipot. You know, I don't feel like this distance here is representative of what I actually want. I'm trying to remember how to change that. Nav page. So it's in nav mode, but it seems to have decided to do a complete U turn. I'm going to leave it to rejoin that track. Burning through some fuel doing this. Yep, 360 D. <laughs> Everyone flying along is going to have tr trouble with that one. And I'm hoping it's going to rejoin that track. Is it nav? What about it is engaged? If you can't see us on the map, ASCII, uh, make sure you've got North Europe server selected. North Europe server. There's 
There we go. I obviously selected it slightly too late. So 40 miles to go. It was just trying to get to the uh, at that point. <laughs> so for this one, we're going to go hip hop down to 2,500 feet. Stay there into Torak. I'm going to right turn from Torak, sending it 3.3 to GS890. Down we go. 2.9 degree approach. Here you've got a ground speed conversion if you save the mass. But as you can see, 100 knots over the ground, just 500 feet per minute to maintain 2.9 degrees. So, very straightforward. Very easy to start the internet, very easy indeed. It was originally to have it in Canada, but I think it's being outsourced at the moment. Although the rights were sold, I think, in the UK. Good question, very good question. As he's found us excellent. Uh, yeah, and there we go. The last one we're going to fly will be an NDB approach, so we can do something a bit different. Because, of course, this is just flying around in that mode, really. No point doing holes and whatnot. Thanks, Crazy Flyer, for the raid and uh, for following. Slightly annoying, slightly ruining our view, but this is live weather, 25 degrees and lovely, calm winds. Follow, just keep a check. Uh, let's jump into the manual. The manual is it's like it's, it's remarkable, it has so much information. You've got climb data, the, the different gross weights, it's, it's an amazing resource. And here is the checklist. Okay. That's more like it. So there is a run-up check. Check the propellers, feather, yeah, all sorts. So let's see, let's jump into this where we are. Okay, so I found the checklist at the back of the uh, manual. Not much to do on approach, signs on, landing lights on. Before landing, you check the nose wheel steering is centered. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So this, this little uh, lever will need to be centered, hence the red line. So this is a nose wheel steering tiller. So I imagine if, this is, if you accidentally had this out of line, the nose wheel would be out of line on landing, which would be very bad news. You'd land all doing well, and then the nose would touch down, and you'd, uh, yeah, you'd swerve off. Let's see if we can pick up the speed a bit. Okay. I wonder how fast it will go. Before landing, your damper goes off before landing, interestingly. Let us fall forward, yeah, which makes sense. We did do that last time at least. Okay, so we've got the checklist, that's good news. Let's see if I can find the cruise performance. So 91% on the propellers for the climb. The cruise recommends 75%. Ah, so further back than we're at. Basically the bottom of that green arc. There we go. But I am noticing a slight drop in airspeed for doing that. Back to 150. Torque is way up high. OK, 
Okay, stabilizing ish. Thanks for the follow. -in. Okay, so we're sitting about 100, and just about 150, 148 knots. That's fine. Uh, that's expect good. So for the climb, they recommend about 91 percent. Okay, good to know. Good to know. You could spend hours and hours and hours, days reading this manual. That's it, days. Right, so the, yeah, the engine intake has an inertial separator, a large deflector that can be extended to prevent dust, dirt or ice from being sucked in. It's electrically, it's massively extended and electrically locked. So there you go. The control in here is those eyes on the panel. So many things to learn, so many things to learn. Yeah, Ed, you'll be very happy with the manual. <laughs> you have plenty to read through. Plenty to read through. How we do it? So that's our approach, which looks right. Loading of fuel. Loads of fuel. It's getting slightly out of balance. We can actually choose how we want it, so we can feed both from the forward or the aft tank. So left and right you have forward and aft tanks. Indicator test works as well. Look at that. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get much more out of the engines. I don't want to push the torque any further. It's measured in torque as opposed to RPM because of course the RPM we, we're setting. 75% of the cruise. Um, thanks for the follow. Do you have some? Oh yeah, we set the RPM, but it, it doesn't. In, a, in an airplane with continuous or the constant pitch, not constant pitch. Sorry, in an airplane that has a fixed pitch propeller, then your RPM is directly related to how much power you're getting from the engine. Because the faster it turns, the more air is pushing. But with a constant speed propeller like this, it doesn't matter. I can change the power setting like that reducing the fuel flow but you'll see the RPM stays exactly the same um, so completely use this measurement of, uh, of how much you're actually getting out of the engines so that's where the torque comes from and that shows you how much torque is being applied to that propeller so we're putting them a lot of torque through that at the moment we're almost you know sitting there at that limit because the propeller will be turned very course to the air so it's pushing a lot of air back even though it's at a relatively slow RPM. Battery has reduced the temperature luckily <laughs> that was getting a bit concerning. After says just got from watching you on YouTube. <laughs> I didn't realize you streamed on Twitch. No we do yeah we stream on uh, both YouTube and Twitch these days. Some streams I do just on Twitch when it's just me learning something um, as opposed to a proper flight. Yeah. Jorty but jo short short says, are pilots allowed to sit at the airport reading the manual? Or does that make people nervous? Um, well, we read charts. I mean, when passengers board, especially on the Airbus, they can often see in any way. Um, so, but they, you know, on the flight deck, you can see all the charts. But I don't think they'd recognise a manual. I mean, if you get to work and you, you realise you're flying an aeroplane that has defects, uh, for example, a system system that is inoperative, maybe a bleed air system, an air conditioning pack, these are quite common things on the Airbus. Uh, but it could be bigger, it could be a hydraulic MEL, uh, where you have to do certain checks, uh, additional checks I should say, then 
yeah, quite often you'll, you'll sit be reading through that or reading through the FCOM just making sure you've understood the implications of it uh, particularly the MEL so but yeah <laughs> I suppose the passengers thought that's what you were doing but I think most people like to just think you're just doing your usual sort of day to day stuff George says what is your favourite tea so my favourite tea I'm going to have to be lazy and say just English breakfast which probably is not the right term for it but that's what it's known as in England <laughs> Simon says, regarding the RPM, would you have to watch out for harmonising, like in the DC-6, or is that no problem in a turbo prop? Uh, no, indeed, you would. You would need to look out for harmonising, and you'd want to sync the propellers. Yeah. Now, I can't see that... Uh, oh, we're both we're feeding from the forward tank. Well, that's fine. Um, I can't see any measure of the vibration, or that sort of black and white spinny disc. So I don't know how you would be expected to... Um, do that aside from your own judgment in this aircraft. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Thanks for the subscription and follows. Uh, the internet lad follows us on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, Dark Speak and uh, Mike. We are not tuned to an ADF, no. So we're going to try out that ADF later. Interesting, so apparently it should be at 90 degrees, which would make more sense, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Again, this is a B to build. There's lots of work being done. I think there's several versions later than this already. Thanks, Alistair. Follow the Twitch channel on YouTube. Appreciate it. Checkpoint. Good to see you, Checkpoint. I hope you're doing very well. Checkpoint says, need to fly my work again. First week of Feb, right before my birthday. So I see it again. Excellent. Enjoy and happy birthday for uh, February if, uh, if we don't see you before then. George says, any advice for a new streamer who streams next plane then? I don't think so. Oh, there you go. Look, the boost pump forward is concerned. Let's go back to norm. There we go. Um, advice for, for streaming I mean it's uh, just make sure you're doing what you enjoy and that's yeah that's definitely definitely the way to do it because otherwise it's quite quite consuming if you do a lot a lot of streaming and if you, especially if you're doing something you're not enjoying <laughs> good well it's probably time we head down there we're only six miles Go, apparently and we can drop down we're over the sea we're going to drop down to 2500 feet minute bringing the power back so I will let it accelerate a bit good evening the Isaac Alistair is trying to catch up with no water throttle <laughs> yeah no water throttle on the twin otter of course you could have those assigned and done yourself no doubt Skipper Jeff says, do your thing and be you. Do not feel you have to copy popular streams. Exactly, yeah, definitely, definitely. You're welcome, George. Paul Braun says, I'm not sure I can get the 748 in here. No, you might struggle with this one. It's just like the shortest, and especially landing on coral. Mike Kelly says, I recently discovered your channel and I'm enjoying watching the videos, learning the 8020 and summoning the confidence to try bats in. Thanks for taking the time to make all the videos. Cheers. You're very welcome, Mike. Thanks so much for coming along to say so. Glad they've been useful. G Slayer, no, the Twin Otter has not been released yet. It is on the way 19th of Jan, so two days to go. Thank 
12 e5. So there is a way on here. There's so much on these to see, like total distance remaining. I'm not sure how much is modeled in this GPS. After we're descending to 2500 to match this chart, should be appearing, maybe not on the chart yet. I thought we're somewhere here. I'm surprised about that. We're not descending quickly enough. We shall see. The yeah, flight some guy says, enjoyed the flight, love the channel, and thanks for sharing all your real knowledge. Much appreciated, Jim. Thanks for coming along, for the yeah, flight some guy. Good to see you. And uh, yeah, the yeah, flight some guy, as I said, lots of videos and uh, group flights and so on in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator using various, various uh, VR headsets. Ah, uh, Skipper Jeff says, first thing it needs is the GNS 530 mod. Yeah, that could be a good idea. Thanks for the follow. How fast? We're not going very fast. I might accelerate. Let's do this a bit sporty. Get a power up. Doing 145. A bit quicker. I'm going to increase the VS. Ah, that's because I pressed. I shouldn't have done that. There we go, it's found us. Two and a half. Let's just get down. Boost comes around. Fuel. Half the tank is heavier. That's fine. Feeling both for the approach would definitely make the most sense. Goblin Zeus says, watching. Nice plane. This feels nice. Glad you're enjoying it. Internet Lad says, I was going to ask, are there two other pilots? I see the Cat 140 below the avionic stack. Then there also appears to be smaller. Yeah, so this is what I was expecting to use. This is what I used in my the last time I used a twin after in flight sim. You see, I'm talking, we're over talking it there. Um, yeah, so I've been caught off guard a little bit by it. <laughs> but yeah, there seems to be, you can use this or you can use that. So you can see Nav is lit on here, because it is down here. Okay, the next leg. Torak. Shortly after, so we need to be at 2,500 at that point. So we're definitely sitting a bit high. This could end up being a bit of a steep approach. I haven't seen this runway before. I did go to the last one. So, still IMC. Time to slow down. We're going to embarrass ourselves. Powering back. Bringing the RPMs up. Not all the way just yet. See how, as we bring the RPM up, the speed just washes up immediately. Because of all that drag that you bring to, bring to the game. Okay, 120 knots. That's looking good. Shortly at so back. We are still a bit high, but we're getting there. Sorry, Torak at so back. So 3.3, we start our vertical speed descent. I have a horrible feeling we're going to be a little bit too high for that. We shall see. Ah, I see. So now if we just press down, it just does it. Okay, that's good to know. Powering back. RPM's all the way up now. We need that drag. So 3.8 to go. 3.7. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. 3.3 we should be at 2.5 and starting so we're 300 feet high to start with 
we're doing, let's say, again, we need to do 500 feet per minute. But it's going to level off. So let's wind the altitude all the way down. Just going to leave it in VS. I want 700 feet per minute. It is raising the nose gradually. The GS 890 should be 1500 feet. Anyway, let's get some flap out. I'm going to take over now. <laughs> Just so we can see if we can actually find this airport. This is going to the autopilot. It did say coral. Gonna do a bit of visual flying. Zoom in. Because we've gone low here. It didn't get that 700 feet per minute in straight away, so uh, yeah, that's that was definitely time to disconnect. <laughs> yeah, I think that I'm not sure that previous airport is open actually, Ian, because uh, it was very much overgrown in Maxwell Flight Simulator as well. Okay, we'll stick with 10, slow it down, should be right in front of us, I'm hoping someone's parked on it, that's what we can see over there, any bit of mechanical turbulence, let's go flaps 20, pops are at max, I reckon it's over there, course we brought off at an angle yeah that's it off to the right oh well, we found it good news ah gpu crash on chat down for richard that's a disaster <laughs> let's head over there beautiful calm calm waters as you can see still absolutely glued to our tail the uh the cessna basically <laughs> Almost like AO traffic. Minimums, minimums. This minimum's cool. What direction the runway is? It's supposed to be runway one zero. Uh, yeah, one zero. Okay. Okay, about this heading. I really don't know what I'm looking at here. We might have to do a bit of a visual circle to figure this one out. F-14 crash, so the F-14 didn't make it in. <laughs> this is uh, separating a few of the, uh, the jets out of this equation. Yeah, I'm going to do a circle, so I really don't know what I'm looking at. Richard Darcy, trying to land with three engines and reverses in ops, probably doomed. Yeah, the, uh, is that with the Junkers, which was pretty difficult. To, to land in short distances, I found. I think Bob. What are we looking at? Some coral grass. Ah, oh, it's there. There it is. That must be the strip like that. That would make more sense. I was just looking at the hillside otherwise. Okay. Powering back. We'll drop full flat for this one then. Back to 80 knots. We can get straight in on this one. He says. Confidently. Um, see the speed washing off even with that design. We don't want to sink rate cautions, we're in a twin otter. This is for enjoying flying. I wonder what this airport looks like in real life. Coral and sand. Must be, oh, sorry, coral and grass. Oh, bit too much, bit too sensitive. <laughs> I 
we touch down? We did. Oh, there we go. I'll set up the replay for the last one. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure if we had there. There we go. Well, this looks like a nice airport. Look at this. This is the sort of place we want to be flying around in flight simulator. Beautiful. Oh, well, I need to, uh, yeah, I need to figure out a way to come here. Right. Yeah, JB, don't worry, I, was getting, I got lost in that approach as well. <laughs> that was an interesting one. But we've made it, so... Bring flaps in. I'm going to feather the right engine again. Got to feather both. Shut off the fuel to one. Right, idle power. Goods. There's a YouTube clip of someone landing here. Excellent. I will be looking that up afterwards. Yeah. Because my criteria for this was I, I really just um, looked for airports that had approaches in, in or charts in Navigraph, so we have some idea. Um, that was that, that was my research, which was very poor. I've, I've just not had as much time as I'd hoped to to get things together. So uh, yeah, right. Next leg, we need a similar amount of fuel. So let's do a bit of an uplift. Um, fuel We're back at seventy percent. Put in the CG back. Take a couple more passengers. Goods. They're all on. We're going to do this down at 4,000 feet. A bit of a lower cruise for this one. Four thousand feet. So here comes the F-14. Yeah, the F-14 made it in. I like that livery as well. Great choice. Ladder rate pop-up is. I'm using uh, Fly Life Studio for that one. And uh, there we go. Flight plan. We could reverse it, but I'm not going to bother, actually. I'm just going to delete it. Uh, Ed, thanks so much. Ed, for your very kind. That's very kind. £17.99 super chat. Really appreciate it, Ed. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, Ed says, thanks for another great live stream and for bringing this aircraft to the channel. So happy to see this plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And thanks for the 200 plus videos and tutorials that have helped so many of us. You're very welcome, Ed. That's very kind of you. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm glad you're enjoying the, uh, the Twin Otter stuff. I know. I know you're very excited for it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's still still great, uh, and I'm, I'm pleased you're enjoying it. But thanks so much for that very kind uh, donation, and you're very welcome for all the videos. Thanks for being such an active part of the uh, community, Ed. We, we really appreciate it. Right, uh, let me get this going. So, there we go, runs AGGS, enter, airport, that's where we're starting. We're going to AGGM. And it's another direct one, so this won't take long. Please tell me I've done the right thing. Yes! Oh, that was record quick for me. <laughs> Good 40 miles to go, not too far. Hopefully our passengers are on. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much, Ed. Really appreciate it. So they're all jumping on. We're going to take off straight out to sea, I think, that way. 748 is having to just sort of surf around overhead, <laughs> waiting for its chance. Matthew Presley, good to see you. I hope you're doing very well. The ESC looks like one. It does. I was. <laughs> it did catch my eye as well. Um, it wasn't on earlier, but it has. Uh, ah, there we go. I must have turned it on. Put it back to armed. Yeah, good spot. JBX says, any chance we could. Start, get a start to finish demo flight in the fly by wire 320 with the new current features especially customer FMS uh, yeah I'll have a go the FMS now of the Airbus is getting you know it's getting very similar with the, the fly by wire so any of the TODIS videos will probably work as well for that uh, but right oh lovely DC6 Pan American excellent let us get the engine back to life so starting the left engine Oh, and did I close the door? I didn't close the door. You can hear it spooling up. Good. Let's 
get the fuel up. Gonna bring, oh, let, let it start up and then we get the props up. Fuel's in, igniting, good stuff. Not sure how they landed on the lawn, uh, Cotton, but the DC-6 could be, we haven't flown the DC-6 for a while, and just seeing it there is making me miss that. It is an absolute beauty. And we could fly it now. I could fly it with the yoke. I am enjoying the yoke. The yoke is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the yoke today. Tomcat, DC6, we're not a love this air. What's this, Tom Combine? <laughs> yeah. Alistair says, my first time catching you streaming, having a great time. It's a lot of fun, and I want to catch you streaming again, but too busy with school. No worries, Alistair, but thanks for coming along today. Good luck with all the schoolwork. Right. RPMs forwards. Lost the mouse again. JB says I'm 100% ready for a DC6 stream. Very good. Okay, yeah, we can do the D6 again. Pilot PD says, what's the next airport? We're going to the last one, AGGM now. Which has an NDB. If I look it up, let me get the right name. Under airports, it's good. It's an international airport, this one. So it's interesting. A lot of these airports, where we started as well, were from built originally in World War Two. Um, both started by Japanese forces, and then of course the first airport was taken over by the Americans and finished. But yeah, interesting. A lot of history around this part of the world. A lot of history that, um, yeah. It's uh, we're obviously the Solomon Islands, famous theatre for during World War Two. Yeah, theatre of war. I see. If you see what I'm saying. Ed loves the DC six as well. <laughs> Excellent. Right, let's get that trim set back to neutral. There it goes. So we don't get a sudden nose up. Brakes released. And I think we can just turn around from here. ready to go. That Tomcat's going to need a serious run up out off on this grass. There's some PC6s. Right, let's go. Last sector. Twenty degrees of flat for this one. Let's see if that helps us. Gear up. We will um, try and remind me. Uh, I will load. I've got the replay tool ready to go. So try and remind me to um, start it, please, somebody. <laughs> I'll probably forget. Heading straight out this time. We're flying up the sort of the west coast of this island. Southwest coast. Thanks, Emma <laughs> back slightly RPM back slightly I accelerate a bit more before bringing those flaps in this time Carson says these would be good in a helicopter flight indeed they would ground handling uh, Ed is very good yeah I like the ground handling it's uh, it's got a very responsive those will and I'm just using my rudder pedals for that flaps come in uh, yeah very very responsive but no very good very easy to maneuver on the grounds like all aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator airbus is slightly sensitive on the rudder during the, I say airbus, it is sensitive on the rudder on takeoff that grip on the nose wheel is it's just high because of the binary way Microsoft Flight Simulator does it but it does make it easy to taxi I really liked it on the water handling because you could use the reverse thrust of the engines to maneuver the nose around, as you might have seen in the video, so I do like that. So 
Simon C says the DC-6 is by far my favourite aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That AFE, that Automatic Flight Engineer, makes it, or Artificial Flight Engineer, I'm not sure what it stands for, uh, makes it easy to find, learn, and mastering it without help is really rewarding. Yeah, very good. We're going to 4,000 feet for this one now, so 4,000. We're there in no time. Autopilot, pilot, nerve. Ah, so that does work. Then 4,000, 800. Away we go. So, the last airport. So, two runways of this airport. Proper run, well, two runways, one runway obviously, but 800 metres, serious length. No star, but it does have an NDB approach. NDB DME runway 07. So, that's going to be on the 400. Let's tune that in. That's a squawk. ADF. How. There we go. Google says DC6 is also my favorite right now. There you go. Yeah, then the DC6 is, is just superb. Just superb. I, I really enjoyed it every time I've flown it. And I'm definitely I'm gonna, de gonna try it out with the yoga. I think that'd be really good fun. Why can't I tune 400? It's something I'm doing wrong. There we go, almost. Why does it do that? Can't get to the middle digit. Click it. Ah, I see. Thank you very much. And switch 400s. Ah, there you go. So now it's gone to 90 degrees. So now we've tuned one and it can't. Let's just bring it up here. It can't see it. It has done the 90 degree thing. There you go. Good. Uh, it also has a DME somewhere. I'm not sure what it is based on. D oh, it says D here. No, well, we're going to have it in A. Could just do the NDB, which is done from timings. There you go. Yeah, fly outbound and time. <laughs> Excellent. Ryan says, on an infinitely long runway, how would V1 be calculated? And if there's a failure after V1, would we'll take off be rejected? So, V1, talking about sort of commercial airlines here, uh, if your runway is long enough, then your V1 will simply be speed, your rotate speed. It's that simple. So, if you're not limited by runway length, you'll have what pilots often say there's no split. Your V1 speed is the same as your rotation speed. Now, if you hit V1 and you have an engine failure, we, you won't know where the real V1 is, um, so you're going to continue. We, we, we never reject above V1, even if it's an infinitely there. It could be a 6,000 meter runway and you're taking off after the first sort of 1,800 meters. You still won't reject the takeoff after V1. It's just just an absolute rule. Because you don't know where it is and you don't know how much runway you're going to need to do it. So it's much safer to get in the air. 
as Tom Coy says, V1 would be equal to the R. Ethan Master says, still loved the flying iron Spitfire. Nightmare on the ground, but flies like a dream in the air. There you go, very good. It's looking forward to the Trinos of Water, absolutely, it's great. I should definitely, definitely. Well, we're going to do the 717200 before I forget how to use that. Um, and then we've got, hopefully, to move from that to Concord. But in there, we're sure we can fit the DC 6 and probably an Airbus at some point. <laughs> Goodness me, so many aeroplanes to fit in these days. So many. What a world of choice we have. Probably loading that approach in here. Oh, look at that. NDB07, there it is. Transition on the mud. Should be through the overhead, out and back in. So this is how it gets outbound and back in. I just leave it in nav. Just back it up with a needle when we get there a bit closer. Matthew Presley says, while we never say abort above the one, there is situations where it is just unavoidable. In fact, a correct decision. As I always point it out. So there you go. Yeah, so if the aeroplane doesn't actually rotate, then, then you may not you may find yourself without an option. Um, there's certainly something that you'd never be trained to do, as it were. That would have to be a, a really extreme and unusual situation. But if your engine, if it's an engine failure or something like that, you're carrying on. Four five five. Thanks for uh, coming along and moderating. Um, yeah, the screaming is the flap noise. <laughs> I don't know why. It seems to run every now and then as if someone is screaming. I mean, they could be, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's what that's doing. I don't know why. I don't know why. So someone wanted to see stall characteristics. So let's try that out. So we'll pilot off. I'm gonna put the RPMs up and power back. I'm just gonna keep it level. A bit of trim at first. <laughs> there goes the F-18. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> I'm not sure if the stall light's simulated yet. Let's see. Keep it level. Doing a bit of trimming. Incredible how... Uh, on those high you can. Oh, there it is. Yeah, modeled noise and light. Gonna keep going. Obviously, you'd recover normally. Get that elevator all the way up. So just get it. That's full back elevator now. Very relaxed. Which is lucky because I haven't actually checked this. So just sort of wallowing. It is a high wing aircraft, they tend to be very stable, it's sort of a feature of the design. So yeah, just got a gentle sync rate on. So, get the nose down, out of the stool, ease the power on. Yes, we recovered. There we go. Let's fly it up to 4,000 ourselves so that the poor pilot doesn't have to do, do too much work. So, I think though, we can engage nav mode without the autopilot mode. Sorry, the altitude mode, but not with the way I've done that. <laughs> I was a sound a bit loud, was it? Apologies about that. <laughs>
Evening, Donna Hoskins. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Matthew Presley says, that's the problem I've had with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can't get aircraft to actually stall. Some do. So the just flight uh, stuff, I've definitely had a full stall, but I maintain the absolute best characteristics I've seen are in DCS, DCS World. Unbelievably good flight models. They are so... You just feel the aeroplane. AC four one five says, "I'm just hoping that none of these sounds were coming from the seven three seven nine hundred I fly while watching." No, indeed. So there's four thousand feet. There's the scream. <laughs> Attitude, power, and trim. Oh, no, no, going quite fast enough. Oh dear, that trim will be a little bit sensitive. Right, let's go. Board pilot, please. Out. Ah, uh, it'll work it out. Oh, there's Dougal. You can see Dougal finally. So Dougal, I'm guessing, is in the Kodiak. So people seem to like the Kodiak 100 a lot as well. says I guess I should say to get the brake yeah so if you were you'd expect if you manage to stall an airplane deep enough to sort of get a loss of control um, but there are some airplanes that it's very hard to do that in real life as well uh, this one I simply don't know I do not know Matthew Presley says DCS understands what the buffet is and how to use it yeah so the reason the DCS model is so good is because you can feel the, that buffet before the stall so the airplane vibrates, shakes, there's sound cues as well, so you can hear it and then and you see it with the camera. Uh, and then it gets progressively worse, so it's not just on or off, it's, there's a buffet that starts, gets worse, and then you end up with the, the stall. So that buffet is the turbulent air on the wings as you, you pull the G. It's not... Part of the reason it's so good in these years is because it has to be, because if you're going to simulate military aircraft, um, there's no excuse that like, you need that because military aircraft, that are, especially dogfighting aircraft, will be working with that buffet. That's how you judge your maximum rate of turn, and that's that's what it's all about, especially in World War Two sort of stuff. So civilian flying, we don't experience the buffet very often. You'd hope not ever, really, in your day-to-day -day flying. Kodiak flies great, says Ed. The only problem is it's, it's another aeroplane, but it, it's in for me to uh, try and fit onto the channel. But I hear very good things. Kodiak is fun unless you forget to set that reverse, says Steph. <laughs> yeah, we've all done many things like that, I'm sure. Gordon says, I like planes that make me lazy, like the 320 F-18. Yeah, absolutely. F-18 does help look after you a bit. Right. Are we going to fly overhead? Looks like we might. See if we can spot the runway. I'm assuming it's all of this. <laughs> so that's not, <laughs> not really loaded in either. Okay. HH Aviation says, I can't stick around for long. I'm currently live streaming myself. There's one. Follow it. Setting up to 50, hopefully. I can't have the same as these. Pace can. There you go. Another streamer in the chat. Matthew Presley says, I instructed for four years, so I spent hours and hours sitting in slow flight. There you go. That's very good, yeah, very used to them, Matthew is. Okay, looks like we're landing on grass again. Thanks for the follow, HH. Uh, here we go, outbound. So that NDB is not, not displaying, not working at all. 400, 400, I'm sure I've done something wrong. Don't know what it is. Lock. So the VWAR's up here, not the NDB. It's a transponder. It's definitely on. And tuned. I don't know. 
could be not even modelled in the same, it's very hard to tell. Right, well, out about we go. <laughs> we are visual at least. I'd be curious to see how close the GPS follows this diagram. AH64, so the Apache's coming out in DTS2, everyone's very excited about that, I can see why. Simon says, the more steam gauges, the better. Really looking forward to the Just Flight 146 that will come to Microsoft Flight Simulator, can't wait to learn it. Well, the 146 is excellent, and the Just Flight 1 in X-Plane is excellent, so I'm equally excited to get that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, unfortunately, I failed at my mission here to do an NEB approach. That was the objective of this one. So what we're going to do is, instead of spending ages flying out and about, we're visual, let's do it properly. Let's get rid of the autopilot. Power back. RPMs are up. Power right back, in fact. We are quite high, so we'll get some flap out. And we're going to land back underneath us down there. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, the, the 146, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that uh, a lot. It's it's great fun in the X-Plane. We've flown it a few times and streamed it. It's got really unique little systems, and every pilot who's, I know who's flown it absolutely loves it as well. So, Yeah, dive, dive time indeed. So the quickest way to dive, really, I shouldn't be doing this, what we should do is if you're far out, you want to increase the speed and use the drag from the airspeed. But what we can do here is just fly level. We get a lot of drag out of the airplane powers right back then we'll get the flaps out and we'll have so much drag by doing this it's 20 degrees uh, we're finishing streaming after this actually this will be one of our last this is our last landing today there we go so we're at 20 degrees of flap speeds in the white arc trim it out and now no trouble. Right, flight recording software. We've had a couple of nice landings, I think. So this is obviously now I record one going to be a, the opposite story. We might chart. There you go. We're just coming in. Still high. Keep the power back. Go for thirty degrees of flat. The 146 is lovely to fly, and the pilots who've flown it enjoy it. The automatics are a different story. You need to make sure you assign a control wheel steering button and so on. <laughs> but we'll talk about that when it comes. No date yet, indeed. Thanks, HH. Right, what are we? Where is the runway? I had any runways today. <laughs> I think 30 flaps would be enough. It's one of our longer ones. Thanks, HH, for the uh, $2 donation. Really appreciate it. HH says, uh, thank you for the chat. You're very welcome. Minimums. Minimums. Okay, right. So, props are up. Flaps are set. Pumps are on. In we go. So much drag, you have to add on so much power when you try and reduce that. Replays on, thanks so much Jen. <laughs> it is recording. Yeah, this is bad, a level segment like down here, it's not what it's supposed to do. Uh, yeah, exactly, what are you supposed to aim for is uh, <laughs> this is slightly confusing me. But let's just check this is actually the airport. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, I, I often compliment the scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but people have sort of questioned some, some of its coverage, and I can see why now. It's, it's great around Europe and America, but there are p some parts of the world where it is 
not all there, but I can understand why this is a relatively remote part of the world. 50, 40, 30, 20, okay. 10. There's a touchdown. And second touchdown. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, Tomcat made it in. Seven four seven made it in. Seeing as you go around, yeah, that would be quite something in this. Well, this would be yet another lovely place to park up. So we will do just that. Bit of an nervous flare, exactly. Yeah, sitting high on that one. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, there you go. So hopefully um, we've answered a few few of your questions. For those of you interested in the Twin Otter, let's swing it around. And brakes, right. Yeah, thank you all for coming along on this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's. Uh, well, we can't really shut it down if we're going to do the replay. Let's do the replay and then I'll shut it down. That's what we'll do. And we'll go throw, shoot. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, it's given you a bit of an insight into, into what the Twin Otter is all about. As we said, releasing in a couple of days for those of you interested. Do check out my video on the channel where I show you all the different variants as well that are included. So there's a flare, way too high, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And finally made it down. A bit of a skip. And then we did it. <laughs> Excellent. Lots and lots of options with this airplane, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's lovely to fly. Very straightforward. Just gonna get used to some of the, uh, the the strange parts of the systems. This is a preview build, as I said. So if there's something you don't like, in particular sounds and animations. Those are the two things we're still waiting on. Just a couple of fixes, in particular the sounds. They, cutting that but I suspect the build that the dev team are using is way ahead of this one now oh there we go let's be playing as in people so uh, what I'm going to do then is get all the way to where we were let's the replay good let's jump back in and we'll shut it down so as before, props feather, mixtures off. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa Maggie, for the five dollar uh, super chat. Really appreciate it. Lisa says, uh, "Thanks for the stream, Cat. Enjoyed flying with you. Thanks for flying along. Thanks for joining us today. I'm glad you enjoyed it." Okay, engines are shut down. Gonna uh, actually let's just power it down. Uh, let's go. Oh, we're going to get the, get the menu. Let's go and open the door. Thanks, Pilot Pilly. Thanks for flying along. Pilot Pilly, of course, another streamer. F doing lots of uh, German aviation, I believe. Oh, I left the flaps down. Pash is going to bang their head on that as they walk off. But, uh, uh, right, so I'll leave it as we do. It's just traditional at the end of the group chats on the outside view. We've got the Tomcat there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Hopefully that's answered uh, some of your questions about the Twin Otter. Uh, there's more videos coming on the channel. I've got a recent video went up with the... Oh, there's the, the D6 we wanted to see. <laughs> um, I've got a video on the channel of the Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo yokes. Just some of my thoughts on that. I don't have that yoke anymore. I was just borrowing it. But uh, yeah, so that's my honest opinions on that. Uh, and we've also got another challenging approach coming soon on the channel as well as more live streams we're going to fly the 747-200 and a few other airplanes so do please subscribe if you'd like to see those if you're watching on youtube please leave a like on the way out uh, if you've enjoyed it. it makes a big difference to the channel really appreciate it and thank you very much of course to the moderators for keeping us safe and uh, anyone who's very kindly donated really appreciate the donations and support for the channel and of course thanks to all of you just watching along and chatting on twitch and youtube as well as just uh, watching on really appreciate it thanks for joining us hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you soon for another uh, live stream or video of course
keep safe and well. Bye.